Job chapter 2. Job chapter 2. You can see it or not. I didn't check that. I just put that up there. Job chapter 2. And starting in verse 1. I'm not going to read it, but if you back up in chapter 1, it talks about, you know, probably the worst day of anybody's life and almost all the existence of humanity is that every one of Job's children, all of his stuff, in one day was gone. It was just another servant told him, hey, this happened, and then it says, while he was yet speaking, meaning while the servant was still talking to him, another servant came to him, and then something else happened. It was just a, 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 one after another of just all these different things, and we're going to get into that a little bit deeper, but I just wanted to give you that background before we read these uh, verses in chapter 2. It says, Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Now remember that. The Lord initiated this. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? That there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, that feareth God and escheweth evil. And still he holdeth fast his integrity. So we're going to be talking about tonight. And although thou movest me against him, to destroy him without cause. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. But put forth thy hand now, and touch his bone and his flesh, and, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, be, but save his life. So when Satan forth from the presence of the Lord, and smote Job with sore boils, and from the sole of his foot unto his crown, or his head, and he took his pots herd to scrape himself with all, and he sat down among the ashes. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain Thine integrity, curse God and die. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? Evil? And all this did not Job sin with his lips. Let's pray. Dear God, I thank you for this opportunity to preach. God, I pray that you would help me now. God, I pray that you just give me an unction. God, I pray that we would meet with you. God, I pray that you would hide me, and God, that we would see you, and that really you would just give me the power, God, the Holy Spirit power, to show what you've shown me from your word, God, just how important integrity is, and how we have such a great example of, in the, of it in the Bible here with Job, God, and even you being able to brag on him. God, I pray that you'd help us to learn something tonight. I pray you'd convict us where we need it. God, I pray you'd help us where we need it, and encourage us. God, I pray that you'd uh, be with every one of the uh, church members here, attendees, God, that you would bless them. And I pray that you would bless them for coming to church and making church important tonight. And God, I know there's a lot of churches around the world having church right now, and I pray you'd bless them. And God, I pray, as we heard this morning, that we would reach out to other people and bring more people into church. God, that we'd be a light in a dark world. God, I pray again that you'd help me now as I preach this message. And I pray you'd give me just the power and the ability to do it. I pray you'd you would just be with the hearers, that we'd have open hearts to hear what you have for us. God, I thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So integrity, if you look it up in a Webster's 1828 dictionary, it is moral soundness, purity, uprightness, or honesty. I describe it as doing what is right when it's difficult to do so, or doing what is right when nobody praises you for it. C.S. Lewis says, Integrity is doing the right thing when no one is watching. So you think of, you know, people say character is who you are when no one's around, and having integrity is what you do when nobody is looking. At time when you're, you're by yourself or whatever it may be, and what your mind thinks to do, and, and that is when somebody who has integrity still does what's right. Somebody who doesn't have integrity is somebody who will do what's right just because somebody is watching. And I know I've you know, as a school teacher, and I'm sure Pastor Water knows as a principal, when you walk down the hall and everyone starts scurrying and they're throwing stuff in their lockers and they're slamming it, and it's just like, or well, I remember, I don't want to get too far off, but you know, integrity is when someone's not watching you and you're still doing right. And when we, I teach fifth grade, and that's right in the hallway. And every once in a while, you hear a phone ring. High schools aren't allowed to have their phones, 
And they're like, oh, there's a phone, there's a phone. And we, you know, we, I run out and try to find who it is. And we never found it once. Once it was mine. But, you know, it, it, it's doing right. Even when no one tells you to, or, you know, no one is watching you, seeing if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. That's integrity. Or integrity is when you're hit with a trial and it's very difficult to keep following God. It's very difficult to go to church. It's difficult to pray, whatever it may be. And you keep doing what's right. We see that here in the life of Job. Looking at a story, we're going to be looking at the story of Job in here in the Bible. The background of Job. Job is the oldest book in the Bible. And how is that possible? Genesis is about creation. Well, Moses wrote the book of Genesis. He wrote the first five books. And Job would have been before Moses. He would have been the, about the time of Abraham. And the, he would have been the patriarch, patriarchal period. So Job is one of the oldest books in the Bible. And we know that because there's no mention of the law in the book of Job. So if, you know, if he was an upright man and he was... Perfect and you know and all of that. You know, it would have mentioned the law, but they didn't. And theologians assume it's because it wasn't written yet, because Job was older than Moses. So just some background. You know, the theme of Job is why do the godly suffer? You know, why do good people who want to do what's right, who follow after God, why do bad things happen to them? That's really the question that a lot of people like to ask. And we see here that it, one of the reasons may be that God is testing them. A lot of people say that you know God approved Satan to attack. Job. No, the reality is, is that God brought it up. God said, have you considered my servant Job? And then he just starts bragging on it. He talks about how he is perfect and upright and all that he feareth God and he still holdeth fast his integrity. If Satan were to come to, if God were to say to Satan, you know, have you considered this person? Insert your name. What would God have to say about you? You know, I thought about that. That's a very convict, convicting thought. Is if God were to brag about me or talk about me to Satan, have you considered Anthony? What would he say? What would he say if he was talking about you? So that's the background of Job. Going through the first two chapters, like I mentioned before a little bit in the beginning, you know, God, you know, God mentioned Job first. He said he was perfect. He was an upright man that feared God. He holds his fast. Is integrity. So holding fast your integrity. What that means is just you know sticking to it, doing what is right. And that's what we're going to be talking about tonight. Just three simple points. You know, holding fast your integrity. So number one is your attacks, the attacks on integrity. So it might be coming as a shock to you, probably not, but not everybody has integrity. We see that more and more, that less more and more people are losing their integrity. You see, it, it, it's getting worse and worse. We know that that the world is just gonna get worse and worse until Jesus comes back. And fixes everything, but attacks on integrity. The first point here, letter A, is loved ones. In verse 9 and 10, it says, And then it set his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. His wife is pretty much saying, Are you kidding? Look at all God has done to you. You're still going to retain your integrity? And Job is like, Yeah, you. Now, I would never say this, and neither would you, but he said, You talk like a foolish woman. He goes, that, that makes no sense to me that I would go against God. You know, it, and I thought of this, you know, your integrity may not make sense to other people, but it makes sense to God. Doing what's right in certain situations may confuse even your closest of friends, but it doesn't confuse God. They say, oh, well, I'm going to church, I'm not taking the overtime. That, that may be confusing to some co-workers, but it's not confusing to God. Whatever it may be, God wants you to have integrity. Even if it's a loved one, a spouse, a family member, a friend. You know, God doesn't, it doesn't matter who's attacking your integrity, you should still have that integrity. You know, and the next one we see, A, was your loved ones, B, is Satan. Obviously, see, we have in the story that Satan is attacking Job. Why? Because of his integrity. Because he has this desire to do what's right. And, and you, what the, the point here is, is when somebody attacks your integrity, when you have a loved one or a family member or the Satan or a, a demonic attack against you to say, to try to get you to sin, to get you to stop having integrity, then, you know, we need to keep having integrity. You know, there is no excuse because someone says to me, oh, well, you don't need to do that. You know, oh, okay, I guess I won't do it. No, you have to have that conviction on the Bible that I'm going to do what is right, no matter what people say. Because you may be surprised, uh, you know, in your life who will tell you to do what's wrong. And you may be surprised in your life who will you know, lead you a wrong way. But the reality is, no matter who it is or how close you are to that person, you need to have integrity. You need to do what is right. But whether it's Satan himself attacking you. You know, the Bible, not the Bible, sorry, I say that a lot. A quote, God gives his toughest soldiers the hardest battles. We see here that Job is, you know, what, and we think to ourselves, why did that happen to Job? Well, God is testing Job. He wants to see if he's going to do what's right and Satan himself is attacking him. The whole thing, people think the whole thing was Satan's plan. We talked about that. No, the whole thing 
was God's plan. God was testing Job to see if he would retain his integrity. Satan is under God's control. Now, yes, we have an enemy. You know, we, we serve God, but there is the devil, and the devil is under God's control. There's nothing the devil does that God doesn't know about. And think about this for a second. God is omnipresent, meaning he's everywhere at all times, but Satan is not. Satan, people say, oh, the devil made me do it. But the reality is the devil's probably not attacking you personally because the devil's not everywhere. Now, the devil's devices, whatever it may be, you know, entertainment or whatever, you know, different devices that the devil uses, yes, the, the devil is, you know, attacking you indirectly. But we see here that the devil himself attacked Job, and Job was able to retain his integrity. But, you know, the devil is a defeated foe. Uh, and it's always interesting to me that the devil knows he's defeated. I know that because he, when Jesus tempted him, he used the Bible, which means he must know the end of the Bible where he's thrown into the lake of fire and he's defeated. Well, he's doing everything he can to bring other people with him. It's a sad state, and the reality is you need to remind yourself that when you're attacked or when you're feeling like somebody or whoever it may be or a demonic attack or that Satan is trying to get you to lose your integrity, know that he's a defeated foe. That we are more than conquerors through Christ. Okay. So no matter what the temptation is, you can say no. There is no, God doesn't say, oh, well, that one was really difficult. That's okay. No, God is displeased. You know, the thing that David did displeased the Lord. God hates sin. And every time you lose your integrity, it's not okay. Or not, the, I heard people, well, it's not that big of a deal. It's a big deal to God if you don't keep your integrity. And it was a big deal to Job. We see here that he did all he could to hold fast his integrity. <laughs> Satan is a defeated foe. Just remember that. And then, it, so our attacks on our integrity will be our loved ones. Satan, or our own flesh. There are going to be days when you don't feel like doing right. You say, Anthony, you're a pastor. You're not supposed to say that. Well, the reality is there's going to be times when you're like, this is very difficult. You know, the easiest thing you can do is do what's wrong. It, it is not hard to, you know, not read your Bible. It is not hard to sleep in. And it, it's not hard to forget to pray. It's an easy thing. But God didn't call us to an easy life. You say, oh, well, I got saved to go to heaven. Well, that's you know, that's great. We are going to heaven once we get saved, but the Christian life is not always going to be easy. You're going to have to say no to things, and you're going to have to say no to sin. That may be difficult, but God has given you the power to do that. The Holy Spirit is going to empower you to say no to sin, to help you retain your integrity. There are times when you feel like that is impossible. There's no way. You know, the Bible says to James that when you're drawn away of your own lust and entice, that word entice means trapped. When, when you're in such a temptation that you feel trapped, like, I had to sin. Or I just can't get out of it. I feel like I'm trapped. The reality is that God can give you the power to break that. You know, we've heard all the great songs, you know, breaking the chains of sin, or you know, love the song, you know, the, the power of sin has no hold on me. That is a true, that's a fact of the Bible that you can say no to sin. The Bible says in one of the Gospels that, you know, if, you're, uh, if you follow sin or whatever, you're a slave or a servant. To that sin. So you don't have to be a servant to sin or your own flesh. You can hold your integrity and say no to these sins or these attacks. Do not stop doing what's right when someone attacks you. I know it, it, it may be easy to go with the flow. I don't remember which teacher it was when I had it. There was a, there was a picture when I was in elementary school. It was a bunch of fish. And one of the fish was going the wrong way. It says that it was like the wrong way may not always be popular. Something like that. But that is true. That you may be the only one doing what's right. Or maybe it's just your family in this certain situation. But God is there. And God wants you to do what's right. Even if no one else is doing it. Do what's right even when you're attacked. Do what's right even when it's hard. You may not see attacks against your integrity. But here, let me show you what they look like. Well, that's not a big deal. You know, you only missed... One night, you only you know, you know you read your Bible once this week. That's okay. No, it'll be subtle. You know we know the devil is a very subtle uh, creature and his subtle attacks. Or you'll say, you know, what's the point? You know, what is the whole point of doing that? What's the point of going soul winning? What's the point of we heard this morning passing out tracts? The whole point is that that's what we're supposed to do, and it's the right thing to do. And you know, people really are going to hell. And we need to tell them how, how to go to heaven. You know, doing what's right, having integrity is the main thing, even in trials. Hold fast your integrity. You know, trials are not an excuse to sin. Trials are not an excuse to be able to do what's wrong. And I, uh, you know, our, our family situation, going through the trial that I went through, sometimes, I'm going to be honest with you, I thought, I said, you know, this, you know, this trial, God understands that I've sinned because I'm going through this. You know, God doesn't ever understand sin. God never condones or okays sin, whatever it may be, however difficult your situation, and I know and I can say that because look at Job's life, none of us 
have gone anywhere near what Job has gone to. I mean, he lost everything, his whole family, every possession in one day. And he, what did he do? He held fast his integrity. Others may mock you and you know make you think that you look foolish, but the reality, but we still need to hold your integrity. Keep doing what's right and keep following after God. So first, there's your attacks on integrity, and second is the importance of integrity. One, the first point and the second point is the importance of integrity. Letter A is it's valued by God. We know that because God mentioned it. We see here in the verse of verse three. This is God talking to Satan. You know, what a, a discourse here in the Bible. The Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil, and still he holdeth fast his integrity. So, you know, it's important to God to the point where God mentioned it in his Bible, the point where God, when he talked about Job, he mentioned his integrity. You know, God values integrity. He mentioned it to Job, and he knew Job had integrity, and he put him through the trial. But remember, remember that, that God is the one who initiated it. God said, consider my servant Job, because God knew he was going to hold fast his integrity. You know, I've heard someone say this, and it really made a difference in my life. You know, God is rooting for you. Amen. So whatever trial or whatever temptation you go for, God is rooting for you. You may be in a time in your life to you say, nobody cares, nobody's on my side, nobody's rooting for you. God is on your side. God wants you to do what's right, and he's going to reward you abundantly when you do what's right. The Bible says that he has a crown in heaven for you every time you resist temptation. You know, I talked about, we've been going through the book of James in youth group, and that's in there in the book of James. That you know, How do we store treasures in heaven? Well, one way to do it is every time you are tempted and you say no to temptation, you're rewarded. You may not see it right now on this earth, but think it to yourself, that's another crown. That's another reward in heaven, and that, that may just be a good motivation for us to say no to sin, to hold our integrity. God values integrity. Well, I already said my next point is letter B is God is rewarded by God. We're not going to go to the verse, but we know, excuse me, <clears throat> at the end of the book of Job, God rewards Job. He rewards him abundantly, and he gives him more of the animals and more of everything that he's already had, and he rewards Job. Why? Because he endured. You know, there, you may miss out on stuff. If you don't hold fast your integrity. If you don't see to the end of the trial or the temptation that you're going through. God will reward you. And then see here is a noticeable in people. Be someone who has integrity. Be a man of your word. The reality is, is that you know someone who has integrity is very noticeable. And like we mentioned before, unfortunately, they're getting less and less. If you talk to somebody and it's a complete stranger and... You know, can you really trust this person? Or whether it's a person at a job, it's like, oh, I remember at my job once, and the guy, he was a, he was a rather big guy. He was the leader of the line that we were working on, and he, he, he had his wallet left on his little stand there, and he just yells at the top of his lungs, goes, "Who took my two hundred dollars?" And everyone's like, hiding because I mean, this guy can be a little crazy. And, and you know, I obviously didn't take it. I had no idea who took it. And he goes, "I'm not gonna beat you up or anything if you tell me right now, give it back." Where's my two hundred dollars? And you know everybody ran. But why? Because you know it's assumed that no one has integrity if he's someone stealing from him. And, and it's unfortunately that's the world that we live in. That we just have to assume that some people are just going to do what is wrong. But we, as the Christian, we as the Church of God, as the light in this dark world, need to be someone that they can look to and say that person has integrity. Your boss ought to know that he's. You're never going to lie to him. Your boss ought to know that you're going to do what's right and that you're going to work hard and do what you need to do. Why? Because you're a Christian who has integrity. And if you don't, that needs to change. You need to be a light in that world. Even if you're not, you know, you probably can't go out and preach and hand gospels to everybody on your job. And, but you can be a person of integrity. You can be someone who does what's right, who doesn't lie, who, who doesn't curse, who listens to the right music. I remember we all worked in a, a, a couple of us worked in a warehouse once and I'd always play Christian music. And, you know, people would make fun of us for it or make fun of me for it, but I didn't care. I was rejoicing and praising the Lord. And, you know, but it came to a time where somebody, well, they would notice. They would say, you know, the one guy, I worked with the same guy every day. And he's like, all right, Anthony, what would you learn in church today? Because he knew I was going to mention it or trying to talk to him about it. You know, okay. And then I, I remember when I talked about Bible college to him, he goes, what in the world is Bible college? I was like, well, it's going, you go and you study about the Bible. And he's like, why would you want to do that? Is there more money in that? I was like, no, it's, I want to be in the ministry. And they just don't understand why, because a person of integrity, you know, a Christian who does what's right is rare. And we need to be a light in a dark world and be that person to those people and say, you know, I'm going to do what's right. I'm going to listen I'm to the right music. I'm going to 
you know, say the right things. A person of integrity is noticeable. You know, that may be your best avenue of witness on your job. It should just be somebody of integrity. And then lastly, an importance of integrity. And then lastly, a key to integrity. The key to integrity is always being honest. The integrity is being real and honest with people. I think of Job and our story that we're going through. Job was very straightforward. We see he was very straightforward to his wife. He says in verse 10, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? And this Job did not sin with his lips. And then in verse 21, uh, after all that stuff happened to Job, Job said, Naked I came out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, I don't know, I, I'm, I don't think I'm as good as a Christian as Job, but I don't think that would be the first words out of my mouth if I just found out I lost everything. If you look in the previous verse, in verse 20, it says, And he fell down upon the ground and worshipped. You know, you can worship God at any time. However down you feel, or however low you feel, or even if you're feeling great and happy, any time is a good time to worship God. We see that in the book of Job. But also, he said, you know, blessed be the name of the Lord. He didn't put aside his integrity because something happened. He said, I'm going to follow God. I'm going to praise God no matter what the circumstance. And then he was uh, very you know, open and honest with his friends. Uh, I, don't, uh, I didn't mark the verse here, but one point in Job, he says, miserable comforters are ye. And in one verse, he says, oh, that you would hold your peace and it would be your wisdom. I've always called that the biblical shut up. And now not that we're allowed to say that to others, but I read that and I was like, wow, Job literally just said that in nicer terms. You know, just be quiet. You're not doing a good job of comforting me. Just be quiet. He's very frank, very honest. And Job was honest to God and to himself when we read the verse before. Integrity is, you know, integrity is always being honest with someone. Any lie is a sin. Now, I know I'm a fisherman and we tell a lot of lies when we tell stories, but any lie is a sin. Now, that's just hyperbole. That's just exaggeration. You know, oh, my arms accidentally stretched, stretched. The fish was this big. Any lie is a sin. The Bible says in Proverbs 12, 2, lying lips are an abomination unto the Lord. So, oh, hey, Pastor Anthony, I know, I, I know lying is a sin. I, I tell my kids, I tell my grandkids that, you know. But, you know, reality, we as, you know, older Christians or more mature Christians need to know lying is a sin. Whatever it may be, whether it's at work and you know, or whether it's you know on your financial stuff, you know, lying is still a sin. L not being truthful in any way, shape, or form, and you know that is against God. And God hates it. it. Says it's abomination. I remember when I preach lying in chapel, and I always say an abomination. And I go from the example you probably heard it before is like a tomato. It's the most disgusting, putrid thing anybody can think of. Now, maybe some of you love tomatoes, but I hate them. And I would tell them, just imagine biting into it. I mean, how gross that would be. Now, some of them are like, oh, that's delicious. And then some of them were on board with me. But that's what I think of. That's how God feels about lying. Why? Because Jesus says, I am the way, the truth. Jesus literally is truth. And when you lie, that goes against everything that God is. And God hates it. Also, the devil is the father of lies. So anytime you say something or do something that's not truthful, even if it's just a little bit not truthful, that goes against everything God is, and it goes with the devil. Any, uh, lying lips is abomination unto the Lord. 2 Corinthians in the New Testament, 8.21, says, Provide for honest things, not only in the sight of God, but also in the sight of men. You know, I thought that goes right along with integrity. You know, when no one's around, you still have to be honest. When no one's around, you still have to do what's right and be truthful, but also in the sight of men, be honest and be truthful. God hates lying. Lying is of the devil. Anything that is not truth is a lie. A lie, a lot of lying is acceptable nowadays. We see that. Some people lie blatantly right on television and it's okay. And everyone's like, oh yeah, that makes sense. No, the reality is truth has slowly going out the window. Window, And they say that in the end times that truth is going to be a lie. And you know what is truthful now is not really accepted. You say, oh, well, that's truthful. That's factual. It's in the Bible. And they're like, oh, I don't believe that. Or you show them something that is absolute truth, and they're like, oh, truth is relative. That doesn't make any sense. No, truth is not relative. Truth is Jesus. Truth is found in the Bible. So anything that goes against the Bible, goes against the truth of the Bible, is you know, wrong and it's a lie. Because, of people, now because people lack integrity, truth is becoming less and less acceptable. The church of God, like we mentioned before, needs to be people of integrity. needs to be people who are truthful. Integrity is honest is an honest lifestyle. Integrity is the same in public as in private. We talked about C.S. Lewis's uh, definition of integrity is doing what's right when no one is watching. Well, you know, because you never know who's actually 
watching you, whether it's, you know, I remember I'm at, at school and sometimes I'll think I'll be alone in my office and then somebody will poke their head in, whatever it may be. You know, people are watching you, especially if you're a known Christian on the job site. They're just waiting for you to slip up. Amen. Your life needs to be an honest life, life in private and in public. In I think of in the church and out of the church. Your, your life should never be different. You should be the same person of integrity, whether you're on the job or whether you're at home. Whether you're with your friends or with your spouse and just your family, your uh, point here is has to be consistent. Integrity is all about consistency. Whether you're wherever you are, you need to be the same person of integrity. Whether whatever thing of life comes your way, have that integrity. So it needs to be consistent. All the it always happens at least once. I can't read my own writing. It needs to be consistent. So in conclusion, when life hits. Have integrity to take the blow. When life hits, have integrity to take the blow. I mean, whenever, when something's going to hit, you know, life's going to happen, and you're going to want to take a step back from God, but you have to, in reality, take a step forward to God. You have that integrity so when something happens, you know I can fall back on my foundational relationship with Jesus Christ. You may, have, you may be attacked by someone you least expect, saying that's not a big deal. Don't worry about that. You know, God's okay if you do this. God's okay if you do that. If you know without a doubt, God's called me to do this, you need to do it. If you know without a doubt, this is right, and I believe it, and I believed it 10 years ago, and it's good now, keep doing it. Have integrity. Follow God always when it's easy and when it's not easy. And then the last few points here, why? Why should we have integrity? You know, I just went through all of that. You know, Job was in, had integrity. Integrity is being honest and all of that. So why should we have integrity? Well, number one, it's commanded. You know, we have to do right. We as Christians, God's commanded us to do right. God's commanded us to, to not be hypocritical, to not be one thing in one place and one thing in another place. But also it's rewarded. We talked about that before. You know, God's going to reward you if you do what's right. It's not, you know, even if nobody sees it and nobody gives you, you know, applause, gay, you did what was right. God sees that and God's going to reward you. And then lastly, I thought of this is because it's deserved. God deserves our integrity. You know, God never once changed. God never once, you know, you know, turned his back on us. Or God never once said, hey, I'm going to stop forgiving you today. You know, God never did that. So we should never turn our back on God. We should never be inconsistent in our Christian life. We should always have integrity. He's deserved because he never changes and because he loves us so much that he died for us. You know, Jesus died for you personally. We can live for him. You know, I was thinking of the song they were singing, The Rugged Cross, My Salvation, and I just... I was in here earlier studying and just looking at the cross and thinking, you know, Jesus really did die a horrible death. Now, we, we look at that and we say, oh, it's a piece of jewelry that we wear, whatever it may be, and I'm not against that. But do remember that Jesus literally died on the cross, literally died a horrible death. Why? Just for you, just for me, because he loves us. So that when you're tempted and, and, and that person says, you know, you don't have to do that, you don't have to read your Bible, do you really have to go to church that much? Just think, you know, well, Jesus died for me, so I'm going to live for him. He loves you so much that he died for you and love him back with your life. Now the Bible says, if you love me, keep my commandments. God doesn't want you to just say, God, I love you. No, he wants you to show it. He wants actions. And the Bible says that, you know, in John, 1 John chapter 3, I think it's verse 18, talking about that action, love is action. Love is doing what God wants you to do. And that's how we can love God with our lives. So follow, obey, do right, and do it consistently. That is integrity. Have, uh, be honest, and live an honest life. Don't be one person one way and one place, one person in another place. And I'm not saying we're going to be perfect. I know we're never going to be perfect. We, we are humans. We're going to fail, but strive our best to have integrity. Let's pray. God, I thank you for all you've done for us. God, I thank you for being consistent. God, I thank you for always loving us and always being there for us. And God, I pray that we would strive tonight, God, to have integrity. God, I pray for myself personally that I would have integrity, that I would, um, you know, just always do what's right, God, all the time and just be settled in my mind and in my heart that I'm going to follow you no matter what the circumstance. God, no matter what the trial, no matter what the temptation, God, I pray that I would do what's right. God, I pray for each and every one of the listeners here, God, if they um, are struggling, God, with integrity, God, that they, they find themselves not being honest or being inconsistent, God, or, or, or giving up when they're attacked, God, I pray that you'd help them tonight. God, I pray that you'd bless in this invitation. God, I thank you for loving me, God, and what a blessing it is that I get to live for you and love you after you've done so much for me. God, I pray that you'd bless the rest of this night.
and this church, God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's stand and sing the hymn of invitation by Jesus. I love you. Can you come to the altar? October 1st and 2nd, please sign up. $125 a couple. Um, that includes a cruise on the River Lady. Uh, don't forget, Sunday, July the 4th, that's Independence Day, morning service, 9 and 10.30. No service in the evening, so please make a note of that. Uh, also, don't forget, if you have those baby bottles that we've been collecting, they are due back next Sunday. So please make sure you return them. Uh, and finally, Vacation Bible School is July 12th through the 16th. Also, if you want to put a sign up on your lawn, the signs are outside. You can take a sign, take a couple of stakes with them. The only thing we ask is please sign the sheet that's out there so we know who has them because we are going to reuse them year after year. So please help yourself, put them on your lawn. We want to advertise VBS, but just make sure you sign the sheet so we can make sure we get them back. All right, let's pray. God, thank you so much. What a challenging message. What a convicting message, Lord. Lord, that we search our hearts. Lord, we desire to be people of integrity. Lord, we desire to be people that you look down on and are pleased with. And we would pray, Lord, that if there's anything in our walk, anything in our life that's hindering that, Lord, please reveal that to us tonight. Lord, help us to make that right. Lord, we want to walk and be a light in this world. And Lord, we can only do that if our walk is right with you. So, Lord, help us this evening. Thank you for that challenge from the word, Lord. Thank you for the life of Job and how he stood true to his God. Help us, Lord, to have that same integrity. Help us, Lord, to have that same steadfastness, to stand for what we believe in and what we know is right. Help us to stand for our Savior. And, Lord, help us to share the gospel to this world. Lord, please dismiss us now with your blessing. Lord, we're thankful for all that's taken place here today. And Lord, may we take the things we've heard and the things we've learned and the, and the conviction of our heart, take that out to the world, Lord. And Lord, have opportunities to lead someone to the Lord this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here.